Hello and welcome back to Card Spotlight. This week we are going to take a look at Imperial Drain, a card that has been used by Rush players that help starve their opponent. Now this card is very good for any Rush strategy because your opponent is going to need Faria to be able to respond to your aggression and if you can lock out that Faria, you're going to be in a much better situation. And for this week we are going to pilot a Red Rush deck using the Imperial Drain in combination with the Underground Boy as I like to call them, Underground Boss and Brigand, which generate Faria from combat. So while we lock out our opponent's wells, we can use our combat creatures to gain additional Faria and gain the advantage over our opponents. So let's get into the games and see how it performs. All right, into match number one. We're going up against Fedio, who's a very good player. And we do have an interesting start. Playing first, Imperial Drain will be handy at some point. But not right now. It's not something I want just yet. I want, I want creatures first. We get given another Cypher's Wrath back and the Flame Burst. Yeah, but Imperial Drain is something you want to set up specifically. I've talked about this in my article. Like the specific moments which uh, you can benefit greatly from Imperial Drain. And in the opening two turns, <laughs> they're not the moments I'm talking about. If you haven't already, check out the article in the link in the description below. There's a link there, and I've talked about this uh, Imperial car, uh, Imperial Drain more extensively. And uh, yeah, I feel like you need to time it if you want to get the most out of it. And in most cases, you're going to want to be stopping your opponent from collecting Feria as a uh, an, an aggressive deck. Sorry, and Gags Grinder could be played here, but it doesn't really achieve much. I'm just going to go straight for Boss next turn. So double neutral mountain mountain. Uh, we are playing a a slower deck, you could say, when it comes to rushing, just because we demand two mountains uh, pretty quickly. Because a lot of our creatures cost two. We have a couple of ones. We have some axe grinders. We have some ciphers fodder. Uh, but we don't have the luxury of like double neutral, double neutral play king's faithful um, because it's not very good right now, thanks to emperor's command. And that is a charger, and that is a demon. Hmm. Charger is a pain, to say the least. Demon's a bit of a pain in this spot as well, because he kills pretty much everything. So I'd probably go for a brute. Brute seems pretty good here, simply because it it just dodges the the demon. That, that's what's important here, dodging the demon, making sure that our opponent has to spend something a little extra in order to kill this brute, be it a soul drain, an emperor's command, I don't really mind, as long as I'm forcing him to invest more cards. If I'd gone for the boss, I would have just cleared it clean. If I'd gone for the axe grinder, they would have traded, but I was still very weak to win soldier. At least this way, uh, I have like the most life, and I'm forcing my opponent to figure out a way to deal with this. And I guess we'll probably see a, a soul drain. Win soldier is probably the best outcome because we get our combat trigger and deal two damage. Maybe he's going aggressive. No. Okay. Might flash win now. Yeah, okay. Look at that. Who's the aggressor again? I forgot. Oh, that, that's supposed to be me. <laughs> yeah, this card is a nightmare. So we're taking a double neutral here because we can get a mountain on this spot. And that will give us Faria whenever Imperial Drain's all up. The thing is, Imperial Drain's not even relevant right now because I'm being counter-rushed. I really need to pick up another Cypher's Wrath. I don't want to use Flame Burst Cyphers. I might have to. Depend on his next line, but we'll see. Might be Colossus time. Maybe he just plays Colossus. He played Flashwind Command, so... Good old Colossus. So yeah, I can't I can't win a race here, unfortunately. And this is this is one of the reasons why rush decks are not very good at the moment. 
because most of the mid-range tempo decks can just outrush you with some mobility. Uh, they don't need to build lands like straight up to come towards you. They can use mobility tricks to get one creature in range and then initiate a race by building aggressive land. So that's a, that's a sad example, unfortunately, of Red Rush. But we will go into our next game. We'll see how we do against another opponent. Round two going up against Dud Dud Dudda Dudda. I guess you could call it that. Uh, he's got a double D there, but we'll call him Duh. <laughs> and yeah, this has some pretty good. You know, I, I, again, I don't want Imperial Drain just yet. But you know, what? I am going to keep it because I want to show you an example of where it can be pretty good. So double neutral straight up. And we can go double neutral again, Mountain Axe Grinders, a bit slow. Might have to Mountain Mountain, we'll see. Explore. Desert. Air Elemental. So we are now being counter rushed. Which means I'm going to play a Mountain. Because I, wa I want to Cypher Trap this. So getting counter rushed again is not a good way to show the power of Impel Drain because they don't really collect Feria. At most it's going to be used as a way to block face damage. We will play an Axe Grinder. Just something here to just defend if something bigger than two life shows up. Already a very strange game. Oh, it's wishes? Man, how many lands do you want? Okay, this is this is a bit of a, a sad play for our friend here because this allows us to gain access to this spot here. Now, I could have mounted to the Brute. That could have been better. But I'm setting up for a longer game. If we're going against Wishes, there's going to be a bit of healing involved, for sure. Plus one. Into Colossus. I'm getting outrushed again. What? What? What's going on? Oh my goodness. So it's this is what I'm talking about, guys. Like what on earth am I doing here? I, I'm defending already against a free wish events deck. It just kind of shows the sorry state Rush is in right now. And I feel some players might think, wow, it was good that Rush is not not very good. But, yeah, sure, like, I'm fine with Rush being one of the, the weaker archetypes, but it needs to exist. It needs to be relevant, at least a little bit. It needs to check some decks that just want to do what they want, which is most of the mid-range decks at the moment. So I can take Feria and play Grand Shaker. Saves me using the Cy Cypher's Wrath. I'll set an, up an aggressive Grand Shaker. See, I have two Imperial Drains to help against people who defend against me. But <laughs> now they're just rushing me instead. Maybe they know my plan. Maybe they know I have these Imperial Drains and trying to stop them from collecting Feria. So just ignore the wells and, and go nuts. Removal. That's one of the great things Wishes can pick up from... Red Rush and, and cheap creatures as well. That's that's another benefit. See like zero cost brigands there. Probably a flame burst. And a brute. Two cost brute. Zero cost brigand. That's pretty good. Alright, so now we're gonna set up a drain. Set behind us, fine. And you see, locked out all the wells, so there's no collection here. 
for our opponent. So uh, this this is I was talking about this in the article. I've basically decided I want to ignore his creatures from now on, so I'm just going to go face. And this is where Imperial Drain can be really handy because one, you're not going to be collecting Faria off your opponent's well, and two, you don't have to interact with your opponent's creatures because you're not afraid of them collecting Faria anymore. Uh, which is the, the main reason why I've set up this drain. Now this water elemental can kill it next turn, but the, the, the drain's effect will still be active. The wells will still be empty, which is uh, really good. I think that might just be lethal. Yep, that is lethal, guys. Even though I got counter rushed, I still managed to find a win. And the, f the, the thing is, I showed you one example of a drain, but that drain allowed me to push aggressively and take a farrier away from our opponent. Now, I don't know how relevant that farrier was into his defensive plan, but that's probably one of the main strengths of Imperial Drain. We got another match, and this time it's against Holy Scythe. And what? Oh, what a hand. I like this hand. A lot going on here. I can get an early axe grinder down if I need to. But I can also set a brigand. Uh, sorry, a boss into Gift of Steel. Pretty early on. So against some. Against specific colours, like boss, gift can be really tough to deal with. Green is definitely one of those colours. If they don't run the Voice of Truth. Voice of Truth is pretty sad. But if, it, if it's Crackthorn, I know Crackthorn have been running one or two Voice of Truth at the moment for the Soul Eaters, but if it's more traditional Crackthorn list, uh, I'll feel much better. And that's an Eridan. Alright, yeah, Eridan in the house. This allows us to push up. Now, I could play the Axe Grinder. It trades with the Eridan, but in all honesty, I'd rather Eridan stay on the board. Uh, I don't want it. I don't want his hand to get empowered. And this 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 would be a good moment for Imperial Drain. You know, I could Imperial Drain and stop collection. That would be handy there. Right, we have enough to go for boss and the gift. And then we'll pass. So it was, it was between boss and cipher, but I feel like cipher might be a bit more useful later. We'll see. So five area to work with. Needs an extra two damage in order to kill the boss. Not hard for for green. You know they have they have power ups through Elderwood Embrace and stuff like that. Cipher's wrath, like red red green especially has power ups and it has removal. Which uh, makes it very easy to clear creatures, which is why the deck's so strong. It's gonna be a tiki. Yeah, it's gonna be a tiki. A tiki, a tiki's, a tiki's good because they trade. I, I, I'm happy with, I'm happy with trading. If it was Elderwood, it'd be a, a, a bit sadder. Let's take a draw. Like, I don't really need anything else right now. Let me just do this. Just really overwhelm my opponent. I forced my opponent into a reactive state already. Uh, trying to handle these big red creatures I'm dropping. And I want to continue applying that pressure. And uh, making sure that I'm just playing my game plan. And forcing him to to work around mine. Vidran Force, okay. So I still get... I still get two damage from clearing this, which is really nice. And I can do something like this. So I can go like aggressive mountain into brigand. And this allows me to gain Feria now when I hit his orb. Now right now the the Imperial Drain isn't that relevant because he's not collecting off his well. But it's made things awkward because now you want to kill Cypher. Cypher's your priority, but Brigand, you know, with a Gift of Steel becomes quite threatening, but also uh, it's it becomes a bit of a, a problem if it keeps giving me Feria. Now we're gonna see a power up here to protect it from the Brute. It's absolutely fine. There's a Cypher's Wrath. Take a draw. 
It's another Cypher's Wrath, so I actually have a clear on this now. Which means he's getting no fit. Here. And I can develop a creature thanks to the Brigand's Combat ability. And this is why I really like the Underground Boys in in Red Rush. Because hitting, hitting the orb, giving fairy is really good. <laughs> it allows you to play more guys. And if, if and if your opponent is trying to clear your creatures in combat, you're gonna gain additional resources to fill up the board next turn. So that was, that was, good, that was a good example of Red Rush performing very well. But again, I didn't get really see Imperial Drain. But we'll play another one and we'll see if it makes any difference. Last match of this episode, going against Bob. Bob is a regular viewer of my stream, which is very cool. So it's going to be cool to have him feature in one of these episodes of Card Spotlight. Uh, I see Bob. I pretty much talk to Bob at least once a day when I'm streaming, at minimum. And I wonder if Bob knows what's up. He's double neutral, so he's probably thinking, what, what is Aqua up to this time? What did I do to deserve this, he says. <laughs> Welcome to Card Spotlight. Now, Bob is a big fan of Blue Sevens. He's a very big fan of the deck. And I think he's been trying to make it work over the season. So that's what I'm predicting to see. Or maybe it's Dream Reaver. That could be Dream Reaver now. We'll have to see. And this is... This is a good situation for the Imperial Drain. Now I'll play a Brute, it's just out of range of this Herald. And then I drop the Drain down. And now Bob's not collecting Feria. The next turn I set up a boss. Or maybe an Axe Grinder, we'll see. And we'll go from there. Enchant. Emperor's Command. And this, this is why King's Faithful is not playable anymore. And especially in Rush. If you pay 5 Fairy for a King's Faithful and it gets Emperor's Command, you're going to be very upset, to say the least. Let's take a draw. Grand Shaker, that's pretty good. And we have the last tick of the Imperial Drain on my turn, and then I'll play the next Imperial Drain to make sure he doesn't gain any additional Fairy. But as you can see, Bob's moved uh, very differently in, in his positions. Oh man, he has all the answers right now. Luckily, I was able to pick up the Cypher's Wrath. So let's Cypher this and play the Axe Grinder. Now, we're not playing the Imperial Drain this turn because Bob is not going to be collecting any fairy. He has no creatures on board. But now he's going to develop a creature to uh, start defending. And I will then play Imperial Drain. Oh, actually, go to Ninja Toad. Okay, so... A little bit of a, a mistake from me. But it's... I See, I'd rather Imperial Drain come down in a better position, you know? I, I'd rather it... I'd rather it come down when he's really desperate for Feria. So let's... Speaking of Feria, let's take some Feria. Because right now, I'm, I, I'm... I've done a little bit of damage, but not enough. The Cypher's Wrath... And the Brute. That's what really pulled off that damage for me. I need to do some more. Apply more pressure. So I'm going to take this mountain. This mountain's really good for me. And then I'm going to drain. I'm probably going to flame burst this actually. Check my axe grinder. And then I can plus one into boss next turn. So I didn't need the drain, actually. That was a misplay from me. I should have saved the drain for next turn. Alright, plus one into the boss. And then we'll push four. So I kind of lost a tick on my drain because I would have had an extra tick. Uh, maybe Frogify. 
I kind of hope not. I hope there's no Aurora. I hope there's no Frogify. Those are the cards I would swing the game way out of my favor. This is looking like Dream Reaver rather than Sevens. <sighs> Frogify sad times. I do have plus one into fodder, which is fine. And I'll collect off this well next turn. And Bob, Bob is kind of very starved of Feria. There's no way he's playing a Dream Reaver this turn. He could potentially play a Dream Reaver next turn. So he could go for, say, Lake or Card Draw this turn and then go for the Reaver. But it looks like he's got the Ninja Toad. He's just trying to keep, keep me at bay. It's a very good response. I really need to pick up an Axe Grinder. Ah, I wish I had picked up Cypher's Fodder before. Uh, the Cypher's Wrath. But unfortunately, didn't didn't get it. This is going to give Bob some time to get back into the match. I do get to play a Brute. <clears throat> Excuse me. This turn or a boss. I feel like the boss is more valuable right now. Hey, that's what I want to see. My last drain. There's no Feria for this Water Elemental. Putting Bob on four. Being put on five means plus one Herald. Uh... On five. Oh, there's an Aurora sad times. But yeah, that's that's kind of the difference. Like one fairy can usually make a big difference between playing a card and not playing a card. Oh man, I wish I had seven. I wish I had eight fairy actually, because then I could ground shake into ciphers. Is it worth flame bursting? That's that's my question because I might need flame burst to finish the game. So I could go like brute plus one, force a two damage. Stick a draw. Yeah, so I've come. I've committed to the brute line now. Uh, because I took the draw over the Feria. If I was going to go for Flame Burst, I'd go Flame Burst plus one Cypher's fodder. But I do want to keep that Flame Burst. And while the while they drains up, I'm not that bothered. I guess plus one would have been better anyway, because then I could Ground Shaker next to kill the Aurora. Hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe the plus one was better. It's been a while since I played Red Rush. I can't remember the last time I played it. I think it was just as the hub got came up. It was when the, when the, yeah, when the hub was first released and Cappuccino made a red rush list. Hmm. Maybe, maybe Cypher's fodder, maybe Brute plus one was just so good. Like, you can, you can Dream Reaver now. You can dash towards my orb. And try and set up lethal. Now, he's used both Ninja Toads. Which means it comes down to the enchants. But Grand Shaker is going to give me a little bit of time. Not much, unfortunately. Now, if I can, if, if this Grand Shaker lives and I can get a face hit, I could win. Ah, the Baltos. Sad times. And the library, that is brave. That is very brave. Do I have lethal? I think so. Because now I just flame burst this. Hit the face. Flame first this. Give him a well played. Library saves the day and Red Rush continues to win. And yeah, there we go. Red Rush doing pretty well. Uh, not playing a lot of the meta decks. We got to play a bit of Crack Fawn. Got to play against Dream Reaver. A weird event wishes. And what, what was it? Yellow, yellow events. So we did pretty well. Uh, but we didn't get to play against Blue Jump, which would, which would be a very good uh, way to test the matchup. 
that wraps up this episode of Card Spotlight. I hope you guys enjoyed it and find some use for Imperial Drain in your rush decks. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave any comments below if you have any questions or any uh, matches or experiences with this card that you'd like to share. Be sure to check out ferio.com slash the hyphen hub for the latest guides, articles and decks by myself and the community. If you do like this video, be sure to give us a subscribe to keep up to date of when my other content goes up. We have Aquavlad versus the World Bosses at the moment, uh, Deck Doctor, Deck Pilots, and of course, Card Spotlight. So until next time, guys, take care. Have a great day.